Brainchip has announced that it's been accepted into ARM's AI partner program. Now, I'm sure most people are familiar with ARM Holdings. They're one of the biggest semiconductor companies in the world. But today, we're going to discuss why this partnership is a big deal. And then we're going to unpack BRN's recent AGM and talk about some of the key themes and takeaways and what this could mean for BRN's commercialization pathway moving forward. But first, who is ARM Holdings? ARM is big. They're really big. You might be familiar with the news that NVIDIA was trying to acquire ARM for $40 billion. That deal seems to have fallen through. However, it speaks to the scale of ARM as a company. And as we know, we're moving into a more digitally connected world. Everything that we do on the day to day is more and more interconnected. Devices are coming online so rapidly, whether it's from our connected doorbells to the mini computers we have in our pockets called our phones, or whether it's electric vehicles. All of these are gonna require more compute and more processing power moving forward. So ARM pioneered their RISC architecture. This stands for Reduced Instruction Set Computers. These are a microprocessor architecture that utilizes a small, highly optimized set of instructions. Now it's worth noting for context that this contrasts to what was the incumbent competitors. The traditional incumbent was Intel's x86. This is a CISC, Complex Instruction Set Computer Architecture. And this is aimed at handling more complex and highly specialized set of instructions. So ARM CPU is optimized for these simpler instructions, and there's a range of benefits that flow out of that. First and foremost, it's simpler in design, which means it's more compact, and it means it's ideal for smaller devices. They're also more energy efficient as well. So due to the reduced computer burdens, they can be suited for more power conscious devices, can enable better battery life, and this is useful in things like your phones or your embedded devices. But it's no exaggeration that ARM's technology has just about found its way into every different type of technology around the world. ARM themselves have reported that 225 billion devices and counting have their technology in them. And this is all the way from sensors through to servers. And of course, as you can imagine, everything in between. But what's interesting about ARM is they play in the semiconductor space and they're such a large scale, but they don't make any chips. And I'm sure you're wondering, well, what do they do? Jem Davies, an ARM fellow who ran their machine learning group at ARM had this to say, we make designs which are then implemented into silicon chips by our semiconductor partners, which are then put into consumer devices, which are then shipped to consumers, and that all takes a long time. So to sum it up, ARM Holdings have an IP licensing model. They develop the designs or the architecture, which they then license to customers to design their own chips to put into their products. Or these are licensed by chip designers or fabs who can then develop chips for their customers, leveraging this technology that they have licensed. IP licensing is interesting for Brainchip because they're looking to pursue a similar type of model. And so as we can see here from Antonio Viana's chairman address at the AGM, he has significant experience from ARM helping to commercialize and develop this model. Coupling this with some of the other notable Brainchip executives like Rob Tolson, who also have a wealth of experience at ARM in a similar space, there's going to be a lot of unique learnings that they can help to bring to Brainchip to help to commercialize this type of model. And so you might be wondering, what does this all mean? BRN's joined ARM's AI partner program. Brainchip is now connected into a network, which is an ecosystem of hardware and software specialists, really enabling developers to deliver the next generation of AI solutions to customers around the world. And when we're thinking about the benefits that this could bring to a company like Brainchip, first and foremost, it's obviously validation for the mission. A company like ARM is one of the leading names in the space. And so this brings name brand validation. But obviously the network itself, you have the ability to collaborate with ideas and strategies with other like-minded companies in the space that you could be talking to potential customers or partners as well as part of this broader ecosystem and program. Obviously the ability to co-develop solutions is a fascinating one as well on top of the potential technical support. And I think underpinning all of that as brain ships start to think about their rollout and commercializing their Akita technology, it ensures there's compatibility with ARM's product family of processes with the development of essentially what are pre-packaged blueprints for the technology. Now, as we talked about earlier, ARM's technology and architecture is found in just about all of your devices around the world. So this is a significant step up and it brings another channel that Brainchip's now able to focus on as they work on building out this broader ecosystem. And as we can see here, Brainchip's Chief Marketing Officer, Jerome Nadal stated, it's valuable for Brainchip to be part of ARM's portfolio of partners, as ARM is not only a leading provider of AI technologies, but an industry influencer as well. So ARM offers another channel to give end users access to Akita and to help to foster the development of best-in-class AI products and applications. 
And so then that brings us to the AGM. I think there are a few really interesting themes and takeaways from some of the discussions at the AGM. First and foremost, it was clear that this IP focus is being doubled down on. And we've known about this for a long time, but it was really amplified through the messaging. This AI enablement program, which has been developed, is going to be a key to help to enable this customer transition. And we saw that. I think as well, the market opportunity. We've talked about the market opportunity before. Everybody's familiar with it intuitively. We know the semiconductor space, Edge AI, it's only going to grow. But having some examples that layered this really was quite intriguing. And a quote that did stand out from the AGM was one that Dell CEO Michael Dell was referenced as saying, he reiterated his belief that while 10% of data now is generated at the edge at the current time, he believes that that will shift to up to 75% by 2025. We're in 2022, that's only three years away, but that level of growth and that magnitude is gonna be significant. And obviously there's gonna to need to be new solutions to help to facilitate this edge AI. And Brainchip Sakita is a potential solution for this. But of course, as we know, it's no guarantee that you can instantly claim a large piece of the pie. And really what's important to be able to do this is a commercialization strategy. And this was really key in another main takeaway from the AGM. It's not just a case of signing a single agreement or being able to announce a deal, which is of course exciting, but what it's about is really developing a sustainable, repeatable and scalable set of systems and processes so that you can really continue to commercialize moving forward, no matter how you scale or how the market develops. And this sales strategy was evidently being developed. CEO Sean Hare was brought in to develop this and this go-to-market focus. And I think this is all really amplified and really wrapped up by the marketing effort, which has got a maturity in terms of presentation and a focus on really aiming to hit those key targets, those key customers and build out that ecosystem. The ecosystem is critical. We've talked about it in this video today, but the messaging around the ecosystem from the AGM was really, really significant too. It's an integrated and living network with customers, partners. You've got to consider the end users, of course, and the industry at large. And I think it's worth noting, and we've been talking about this for a long time, that it takes time to make a market particularly with a disruptive and transformative technology like neuromorphic computing, like Akita, it's a first in class technology. You've got to make that market. And so no surprise, building a global technology company is a process. As part of his chairman's address at the AGM, Antonio Viana stated, as chairman, his commitment to the shareholders is straightforward. Brainship will always push forward with an intensity that is critical that every global technology company has. The board will expect the employees and executive team of Brainship to always be on the gas pedal, always on the front foot. It's clear that it won't be a straight linear path. There's obviously a long pathway up ahead. It's gonna be very interesting to see how it unfolds. But as always, it's now gonna be up to Brainship to be able to execute and deliver on their aspirations. Rome wasn't built in a day. Thank you for joining us, Akita Ballista. Here's another video you can check out. And for now, stay well and happy investing.